I'm originally from El Paso, but I'm proud to call Austin my home for the last 17 years. And I'm a mom of two kids. One of my beautiful sons has autism. I have a very simple commitment that I live by, and that is to be a stand for kids with disabilities and their families. powering through some serious panic to speak to you to honor that commitment. I want our elected officials to share my commitment. I spent a lot of time here at the Capitol attending public hearings, especially the public education hearings. The first time I came, I knew nothing about the process. I didn't know how to participate but my, my commitment brought me here. The very first hearing I attended was for school vouchers. I came to testify against the bill. I waited 12 hours to testify. During those 12 hours, I heard out-of-state lobbyists given priority over native Texans to give testimony. I heard disability rights advocates clearly calmly state that with facts and data that vouchers do not benefit children with disabilities. I heard private school representatives come and testify in favor of vouchers. Bear with me. Not one of those school representatives in the 12 hours I was sitting there was asked, how many disabled students does your school serve? Not one of those school representatives was asked, how many low-income students do you serve? If vouchers allegedly are to serve those populations, then why weren't those critical questions asked? I think I might know the, the answer. Because private schools do not accept kids with disabilities because they don't have to. Yeah. Uh, sorry, excuse me. I'm, I'm an amateur. Bear with me, you guys. That's all right. Three years ago, I had to take my son out of school. We did three years of at-home therapy. When he was ready to go back to his school environment, I did my due diligence, as all parents would do, to find the right school for my son. I called 13 local private schools in Austin, and I asked them verbatim, would you be willing to have a conversation with me about a child with differences if I'm able to provide a well-qualified aid? Now, I qualified with differences because I know that autism can be a charged word and I wanted to go in with a clean slate just to have a conversation with them to see if they'd consider it. I was told no 12 times immediately. And the next day, I was called back after one school checked with their board to tell me no. I, I had the wherewithal to power through my sadness to ask, why not? And each time, the response I received was, we don't have the resources. So it's puzzling to me why some of our elected officials would be trying to ram through a voucher system if you can't spend it anywhere. And I live in beautiful Austin, Texas, where there's lots of choices. What about kids in rural communities that have special needs? Where are they gonna go? Where are they gonna go? Correct, they don't. Private, here's a couple of facts. These are indisputable. Private schools can legally discriminate against anyone for any reason. Private schools typically, I don't want to say every single one of them, but largely do not take kids with special needs. And the most important item is private schools are not beholden to enforce IDEA laws. Those laws are crucial for protecting our students with disabilities to receive a meaningful education. We know through data, we know that when student, all students are meaningfully educated, they're able to contribute and better our society. Thank you. Uh, 
Why are certain officials pushing so hard for vouchers? I'll tell you why. Because all of them have read the data and they know that voucher states that have vouchers, they first successfully rammed through an ESA, otherwise known as a voucher, for special needs kids. I resent my child and kids like him being used as political pawns. It is not appropriate. It's not acceptable. Kids should never be used as political pawns. Education is not a partisan issue. Our governor just signed a bill ending an illegal cap on special education services that lasted 12 years. It's actually a federal law, but I guess we needed an additional state law, you know, just in case. During those 12 years, thousands of kids were denied, with, with special needs were denied a meaningful public education. Here's a thought. Let's take all the money that was saved on the backs of those vulnerable kids and reinvest it back into public school programs that will actually benefit them. Yeah. Let's get teachers, kids, and schools the supports they were denied for 12 years. Yeah. Probably longer, but that's all that we have data for. Let's help Texas get out of 46th place in the nation for education. And through education, we can help Texas not be 49th, only above Mississippi, in states that accommodate people with disabilities. Yeah. That is abhorrent and unacceptable. None of that will happen by giving public funds to unaccountable private schools. Public money should never go to state-sanctioned segregations. Our elected officials need to get the disability rights our civil rights. We need to commit to only supporting and only electing people who will fully support public education. My dream is for Texas to be a place that values people of all abilities. And we won't get that when we waste, mon when we waste money and resources on effing bathroom bills, which by the way also affect my son because the law states that only people who are receiving help in bathrooms can be in bathrooms. Well, what about disabled people over 10 that don't need assistance but have elopement issues like my son? What am I supposed to do? Just be arrested because I want to keep him safe? That's an unintended consequence that I'm not okay with. Yeah. I'm just a regular person. I have that running dialogue through my head that I'm a nobody who cares what I think, but it turns out people do care what I think and they care what you think. And I want each and every one of you to form a commitment like I have and follow through on it to make Texas a better place for everyone, for all Texans. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa.